This Christian man of God exposes the true secret behind Islam and their world domination plan. And then this angry Muslim hiding behind a mask confronts him very aggressively. But it gets a lot worse when all the other Muslims react at the end of the video. So please stay tuned until the end, like this video, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right. So, yeah, the, what, what's that about? Yeah. I'm asking you. Not asking you. Do you know this is or not? Not sure. Okay. I don't know. You, you, I don't know. What, what is that? Uh, uh, read, it, read it. Read it. You might see it. Revolutionarycommunist.org. What is that? You don't know what this is. You don't know Revolutionary what communist. Do you know what that flag is over there? That's what's that? that? What's that? You know that flag is over there? That's a flag. This is not a flag. This is some sort of a slogan written, victory to the intifada and revolutionarycommunist.org. What is that? Who are revolutionary communists? I'm asking you. you know that Who are the revolutionary communists? Or did you just get this for free somewhere and then put this on without even reading what it said? Haki, this is a Palestine flag. No, no, that's the flag, the colors. Yeah, what is the what slogan? The slogan? I don't understand the slogan. Sure. I'm representing the flag, bro. Okay, cool. So in other words, the text you're not standing for. No, Let I'm me ask you a simple question. When did the identity called Palestinian begin to exist? When did what? The identity called Palestinian, when did that begin to exist? <laughs> I don't know. You're standing for a flag, you don't know a simple question. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're coming to me with these smart questions I don't know about. What yeah, are you trying to get to, though? Tell me what you're trying to get to. My dear friend, oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah, at, at least you're being honest. Yeah, yeah, of course I'm being at honest. At least you're being First honest. First time I've come here to the That's park, good. so I'm seeing what's going on, innit? At least you're being honest, and I respect you for that. Okay, go Yeah. On. This is the problem, you see. Plenty of people in the thousands are on the street today, like yourself, mm -hmm. You know, with good, you know, you you genuinely think you're supporting a cause, but the problem is the very. What cause are you talking about? Uh, now, no, now, don't be dishonest right now. How am I uh, being dishonest? I'll I'll explain. How what cause is it? There that we go. He isn't going to know English. No, no, what cause I'm is asking it? a simple go on, question. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> you are standing for a flag. I'm asking the first and the most basic question. Go on, yeah, go on. When did that identity begin to exist? And you call, you don't have an answer. The identity of what? The Palestinians? Exactly. Years, thousand, thousand years ago, bro. Like when? I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> well, do you know, don't you know? No, I tell you, I couldn't tell you. Well, do you know, don't you know? What did I just say? I couldn't tell you. No, no, well, okay. By, so what, by, does the, what does I couldn't tell you mean? It can mean a few different things. Right, what are you trying you, to get you, to? you can, you I, possibly, I don't, I, I don't possibly know you mean you don't know. My friend, I don't know. Wait, uh, that's fine. Okay. If you don't know, that's fine. Another way, I, I thought you might have said something like, well, it's too long, I don't know. Okay. But if you say you don't know, that's fine. I'd like to let you know mm -hmm. that the identity Palestinian did not exist until the recent past. So you might want to check up, check up your uh, subject area first okay. before putting it on your jacket and walking around as if you are advancing a cause. Of course, you've 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 walked you you've you've uh, uh, you've taken steps back in relation to the slogan. Now you're taking a step back even in relation to the flag. Okay. So what are you trying to get at though? I don't understand. What I'm trying to get at yeah, is yeah. plenty of people no information, but they walk around like an army. No, what, what do we need information about uh, a genocide, bro? What, 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 what information genocide? do I need? What, what, what information do I need? What is genocide? What that genocide is, that these Israelis are doing. What, what genocide are you talking about? What that these Israelis are doing. It's Please clarify. What's the genocide? Even people that are paying you to come here and talk. Your people then. Do you yeah? do you just may did no, you do you do you just then? dwell on lies or do you engage with the truth also? Bro, see the Israelis that are paying you to come me? here and talk. Me? Yeah. How much did they pay? Did they pay me? Knows, bro. See the ones that are paying you to come here and spread. Who message, paid you? Yeah? No, I'm saying the ones that pay you. Who paid you? No one paid me. Bro. Normally, people walk around treating others in the way they think they act. That's what they do. So when when I look at the gentleman, I think you know the, he looks in this particular way. Normally, I look in that way in a particular situation. So maybe he's in that situation. That's how psychology works, and that's what is. I asked a very simple question. Excuse me, sir. I'm not just yeah, being to you. The the quest simple, my dear friend. Many pe thousands of people supporting listen, listen to this. thousands of Wait, please please say, say, thousands of people listen, are listen. thousands of people are bringing you our city me, city to a standstill. Me. With the Palestinian flag, yeah. yet 
the most basic of the questions you don't have answers for. This is the problem. How many other Palestinian supporters are oh, here? An eight-year-old don't need an answer. You're not an eight-year-old. TV to know that a fucking genocide is going on. Do you understand? Okay, so clarify what, what? then. Does an eight-year-old need an answer? So clarify then. Do you know what a genocide is? Yes, it's what Israel. Clarify. The ones that are paying you what they're doing so, to Palestinians. Well, no. Do we not agree just a brief moment ago that you don't even know when the identity Palestinian begin? Did we not did we not agree? I'm not that educated on that. All I'm telling you is When you're on not that. educated, please don't walk around like an expert commenting on things about which you haven't got a clue. Okay, don't do that. Me, me, this is pretty much like me, Now can you imagine can you imagine would you Excuse me sir, I'm not speaking to you sir. Can you imagine Excuse me sir, I'm not wasting I'm trying to engage. You you admit very easily This guy this guy knows a lot of gibberish nonsense. I'm not interested in that. You know what he said before? You know what he said before? The question I asked was very very simple. Excuse me, my dear friends. Excuse me, sir. Can you can you tell me? Can you tell me? Yeah, please go. Yeah, no, he he might make sense. Please. So are you saying there's no indiscriminate killings taking place in Palestine? No, 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 no. What I am saying is, when there is a problem of the scale that's happening, it's not wise for people like him to go mobilize in the thousands. Walk around when they haven't done their basic research is all that I'm saying. Point number one. Point number one. Point number one. An eight-year-old girl can go on the news and see that something's going on wrong, and she can go. I'm saying an eight-year-old girl. I am looking at maybe a thirty-odd-year-old man, forty-odd-year-old man. I don't have a clue. Which eight-year-old boy, girl, are you talking about? Information to see what's going on. Okay, I don't need information to see what's going on. Can you can you believe what's going on here? Excuse me, my friend. in any problem when trying to deal with any problem i need information i really need information especially when you are going to accuse of a nation as committing genocide you better have proper information when you don't have information what's your definition of genocide what's your definition of very good question look the young man is asking a very important question yeah what is the definition of genocide the definition of a genocide is where there is an intentional wiping out of an ethnic group and you don't know Eth- what's taking place in palestine right now. no the the story is a very deep story let me ask you this very simple question have you ever read the quran are you muslim you are a muslim look how it changes in topic finish definition you idiot excuse me sir i'm not speaking ahead, to you go ahead go ahead finish the do you know do you do you see the why i ignore this gentleman I call him gentleman he calls me an idiot should i ignore him or not there is a case in the international i call him a gentleman even when i'm trying to avoid him while he wants to engage with him he calls me an idiot should i ignore him or not finish definition okay this is the problem that's why he won't he will point number 1 point number 1 the identity excuse me sir you can move on if you if you need to take a pee break Why, that way please the closest loo this way the eth- the, the excuse me you know the coward. identity he knows more than us talk no, to my man he knows like i said a lot yes, of gibberish yes, nonsense yes. i am not interested in that i am interested in facts this gentleman i respect he asked a very sensible question and he's still waiting because there are people like him let me come to you my dear young friend i have a copy of the quran in my hands How does the Quran have anything to do anything? I explain to you. How does the Quran have anything to do with what the problem is on the ground in the nation of Israel and amongst the people of Gaza? Plenty. And this is the sad story which none of you would hear. None of you would hear. The problem is this, my dear friends. Yes, they practice. You know they are giving out free Qurans there. Take, excuse me, sir. That was Netanyahu. He said. Why are you desperate using, right now? Why are you desperate right now? I'm answering you. I didn't ask you anything. I'm answering you. I'm answering you. I'm answering you. I didn't ask you anything. I'm answering you. What? What answer? Did I ask a question? Properly, that he using the book of Samuel. What they did to. Why is he desperate? Sir Why is he afraid? How many of Good. Good point. You see sensible people. Finish, finish, finish. Take the Quran in your hands. It doesn't take much time to go through the Quran. 
read now you can read through the quran an english quran in maybe 5 maybe 10 hours maybe 20 hours quickly browse through and what you would find is nearly a quarter portion of this quran explicitly advocates anti jewish propaganda more than half of the quran more than half of the quran gives what is a class excuse me sir i'm speaking right now if you have covid please stay away please thank you if you have covid stay at home please thank you all right go through the quran anti jewish propaganda go through the quran it denies denies basic historical details concerning the nation of israel this is what it does and does it quite elegantly and uses the name religion to this document well i can read through if you want have you ever read this book called bani the surah called surah bani israel have you ever read that have you ever read surah tauba yes i read it you have i read it i am ignoring you i have it in my head go ahead well if you have covid you can move on i've told you already multiple times Surah 9 let me let me take Remember a class your name. you said that is an anti jewish yes that's what you said yeah so go on anti jewish propaganda out and out and let me share he will read as way well from yeah. the bible excuse me sir okay. i've told you very clearly i'm very and sincere wait. and i sincerely okay. want to ignore okay. you you can move on okay i will see one surah at toba one more question as well brother you said that it denies historical things about the about the jews right absolutely and where are these historical things found in the bible or where is this? we'll come to that in a little no, bit answer the question where is no 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 let's read one one let's do one now now you now now you're not being honest oh, no, he, surah 9 aya 20 excuse me sir. wow wow surah 9 aya 29 let's read this carefully fight against those of uh, such of those who have been given the scripture as believe not in allah nor the last day and forbid not that which allah has forbidden by his messenger and follow not the religion of truth until they pay the tribute readily being brought low note carefully the details my dear friends fight against some people So the Quran advocates that the Muslims faithful ones should fight against some people. But what is I I'm, I'm reading huh? don't worry please we are going there no problem. It's asking it's advocating the Muslims the faithful ones the ones who can wear covid masks when this is not an issue anymore to fight against those I'm protecting myself from your germ. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. fight against such of those who have been given the scripture who are the people of the scripture according to the quran very good well done so he is a christian he gets 100 points you are a muslim you get 0 points what's the answer the people of the scripture who is that i will answer you i will continue continue yeah, people why did, who is that the people of the book the who are they talking about the context of war who are they excuse me sir why you don't want you have failed your primary schooling please don't show up at speaker's corner surah at tauba surah 9 aya 29 Are you scared of the answer? Oh wow 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 wow. So suddenly now we need context. Let's read the verse first. Surah At-Tauba ayah 29. Fight against such of those who have been given the scripture. Why when do you fight? When do you fight these people? Well, the Quran will give you more information. Bear in mind, the Quran doesn't let you think through properly. It will spoon feed you. So if you are a muslim who has parked your brain at home the quran makes it simple easy what is the criterion for fighting it goes on can you read start the criterion is simple one second one second one second the criterion is very simple as believe not in allah nor the last day You see the criterion when do you fight the Jews and the Christians when they do not believe in Allah nor in the last day my dear friend here he is a Christian would you like to believe in the islamic allah my dear friend no, oh okay well that's really sad news for you it's sad news for me 
Never in a million years would I want to follow this silly Islamic Allah. Never in a million years. No told you to, bro. Excuse okay. me, sir. Never, but, no but, really, 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 hey, wow, wow, wow. You're being a very bad Muslim. Listen to your Quran carefully. The Quran is very simply stating. Can you let me answer? I didn't ask you anything. No, no, no. No, thank you very much. Believe not in law. One second. Let me finish reading one verse in peace, please. Look, they are giving out free Qurans week in, week out across the nation and nations, yet they are ashamed for me to read one verse. What's the problem here, my dear friends? What's the problem? You won't let me read one verse in peace? All right. What's the criterion for the attack? Believe not in the la not in Allah, nor in the last day, and forbid not that which Allah has forbidden by His Messenger. And follow the religion of truth. Like I said earlier, not interested in Islam, not interested in uh, the Islamic Allah, not interested in your silly last day ideas because you are a false religion. When I have and my friends have taken this stance and the Jewish people have taken the same stance, what would desperate people do? Desperados fight against them. So no wonder Hamas goes to wipe out a nation. No wonder Hamas is desperate. Desperate. Why? Oh yeah, please come here. Try and answer some simple questions. You must be a Muslim who can't make a simple logical sensible comment Bravo. just make some funny noise and move away all right one second and uh, allah has forbidden by his sorry by his messenger and follow not the religion of truth until they pay the tribute readily being brought low believe it or not my dear friends muslims are very busy these days spreading their propaganda hey look with the Islamic Caliphate that we have had for centuries, do you know how much we treasured the Jews, how much we took care of the Jews, and all sorts of similar rubbish nonsense. The Quran is very clear. The Quran is very clear. And the Quran is what they followed for centuries, and what they did, excuse me sir, patience, patience. What they have done with the Jews for centuries is the same thing. Persecuted the Jews, brought them low, treated them as second-class people for centuries. Well, yeah, according to your, excuse me, sir, that is also by the advice of your uh, uh, Jerusalem's Grand Mukti. Learn. Well, we are reading the ultimate proof here, aren't we? The Quran. And so the problem, one second. If anyone wants to solve the issues that Israel has been having, especially with the people in Gaza, the first thing you need to do is to pick up a copy of the Quran. And thankfully, they're giving out plenty of this free rubbish anyway, across the nation and different nations. Pick a copy, pick a copy, read for yourself. And you will understand why there is so much hatred towards the Jews. So much so, the gentleman who was standing here a few minutes ago who has moved away, but he came across a little bit sensible, so I do respect him. So much so, there are thousands of these people who have been mobilized with lack of basic knowledge. I asked him a simple question because he was talking about genocide and so on. So I asked him a simple question. For there to be a genocide, there, need to, there needs to be an ethnic identity. So man, let me ask you a simple question. For those who are in support of this idea of genocide, let me ask you a simple question. How many of you know the as to when the identity called Palestinian began to exist? Any intelligent person who is a Palestinian supporter who can answer this question? When did the identity called Palestinian begin to exist because when you go around accusing a nation a legitimately established nation on the face of the earth you better get your facts right when did the identity begin to exist sir 
Excuse me, sir. Are you planning to answer the question or just trying to derail the conversation here? When did the identity called the Palestinians begin to exist? Yes, sir. Please answer, please. Wasting time, please. Answer. It's a very good point. Answer. You've, you've come here. Answer. Any answer. There we go. No answer whatsoever because they do not want. Palestinians exist 1500 years ago. 1500 years ago. Jewish people, this country brings them 70 years ago. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, Less drama, less drama. I couldn't care less. If you're fed up with me, move this way. The buses go that way. We are not having chicken. Can carry here. You see the problem? What a tendori. I was trying to give sensible statements in the last 10 minutes. 1500 years ago, Palestinian exists. One evidence. What do you do if Jews come to your One evidence. Kill your wife. One evidence. Your Excuse home. me, don't spit. You out You're spitting on your Quran, sir. Don't spit on your Quran, sir. I get offended you when you spit on your Quran, sir. You are idiots. You are idiots. One evidence. Idiot. One evidence. Next evidence. Next so the identity appar So the identity ex existed for 1500 years and that you are so vehemently sure about this uh, Well we're not asking about your mullah sir they are in Afghanistan go speak to them later Now Let me ask you a simple question If you are so confident Give me one evidence, please. 1500 years, one evidence for the word or the identity Palestinian. It's 12th century. What's that? 12th century. 12th century, wrong. No, no wrong answer. Any evidence? Anyone? Are you going to tell me why I'm wrong? No. Well, because you can't provide an evidence. Can you can you provide evidence of why? Absolutely, wrong? we can. Go on, then. Whoa, 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 whoa! Before that, before that, the point. Excuse me, sir. You know who you are like. You are like the person who is sitting on the hot seat. Hot seat for who wants to be a billionaire and wants the fifteenth question straight away. It doesn't work like that, my dear friend. You need to learn basic facts. So. For any Palestinian supporter here, I'm assuming, I'm assuming after you've heard this challenge, you would at least go back home before you show up in the next protest, my dear friends. Learn a little bit of history. Learn a little bit of history and then, then come up with your all your Allahu Akbar, Mullahu Akbar, whatever else you want to shout out in the streets, my dear friends. Don't come close to you. Okay, that's fine. Cool. Next ayah. All right, next ayah. So the gentleman here thinks. Next ayah, chicken and curry. Come on, tandoori, tandoori. So you will see why the Middle East, apart from Israel, hasn't developed for a very long time. If not for the petroleum money, if not for the petroleum money, my dear friends, the Middle the mid where are you from, sir? Where are you from? What's that? <laughs> Good joke. Nice one. Good. Now, where, where did the chapati gentleman go? For, go away? Okay, that's good. Ah, uh, good, good. I want you to begin to make sense, sir. Can that happen anytime soon? Can you can you begin making sense anytime soon? Because you don't talk sense. All right, okay, that's a waste of time. So let me read, my dear friend. Please come here. Please come here. The gentleman over there. The gentleman over there thinks if I read one ayah, Quran could be redeemed suddenly. So let me read one more ayah, and excuse me, friend, I'm reading one more ayah, and you are going to explain how that salvages the Quran, please. Quran need no salvation. We check. Who is the sheikh? So he wants me to read something, but he doesn't go. He isn't going to help. Read thirty loud to everyone, and then and confirm why you said what you said. Oh, there we go. So the master has said, let everyone bow down and obey. This is what, hey, just because you were wearing some funny clothing, is that what everyone should do? I might look like your father, sir. What's that? <laughs> What's that? You're saying I wear funny clothing, I might look like your father, you should respect me, brother. Not, not like my father. Yes. What? So, okay, let's get back to this. Get back to me, I read Surah 9, verse 29. 
And I said, uh, this is one example of why Muslims across the world, whether they are woken up properly in the day, uh, in the morning or not, are so much against the nation of Israel. Half asleep, wake them up, they'll be angry against the Jews. Go around, they claim the Jews are the pro. You know, I sneezed this morning, it's all because of the Jews. You know, I woke up with a headache this morning, it's all because of the Jews. So, no wonder. What's that? The headache just comes from you. Just come from you. The headache is just from me. All right. So, when I ask questions. Question, how which, many million Jewish in this world? You tell me, how many million? How does that solve the how problem we have? How many million? Surah 9, Ayah 29. You don't have any idea. I swear you don't have any idea. Surah 9, Ayah 29 clearly demonstrates that the Quran is maybe worse than the main camp of Hitler. How are you planning to salvage your Quran? No, no, please tell me how exactly are you planning to salvage the Quran? Simple question. Simple question, please. Anyway, let's go back to our original discussion. No, no, no. This is very important. Oh, this is why you brought up the verses. You know, you said that the Muslims are against the Jews. That's your argument. What I am saying is, what I am saying is, to solve the issues that Israel is facing today, no one dare you have a no one dare claim you have a solution, unless and until you learn and understand that the Quran is a basic anti-Semitic anti-Christian material. It's a fundamental fact you need to be aware of. Until you can get your heads around this, don't go around marching in the thousands. Don't do it. It's a waste of time. You're just being a nuisance on the street. So my problem, my poor problem simply is, do we all appreciate, my dear friend, right now, that the Quran and what it says in the Quran needs to be very much considered okay, bro, when trying to find out a solution for the problems in the Middle East today. Do we all agree? Do we all agree, my dear friends? Especially the Palestinian supporters. Do we all agree? What's that? Okay, but now you're just out here. Do we agree? Do we agree or not? It's a simple point that I made so far. Explain, please. Okay, cool. So let's go from the beginning. You said, you said, yeah, Muslims are against Jews and you can find this in the Quran. I did not use the word Muslims in this regard so far. Surah 9. You can about the whole thing, bro. You said, you just what you did, I could demonstrate exactly what you did. Give me the verse. You said, a quarter of this Quran here is anti-Jewish propaganda. That's what you said, right? Anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah. How can it be? How can it be? Oh, you, oh, anyway, let me not even demonstrate. Anyways, go on. Cool, so you, then you brought up this verse, right? Yeah. Read the verse out. Let me read the verse out for you, actually. Come, let me sure. Read this verse. Please come here. I don't want Please to go on camera, I don't want a camera or a camera guy, bro. Alright, cool. That's, this is a very, uh, this translate, I'm going to read. So what, what's, the, what's the problem with this translation? Because that's not what it says. So what's that the problem? You read that's Arabic? No, they don't read Arabic. But that's what not do what you it read says. then? I read English. So, okay, let me, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is, again, phenomenally um, entertaining right now. Let me ask you a basic question, my dear friends. If I have a book, if I have a book which has been translated into English from Arabic, how many languages do you need to know for you to be able to comment it's not a good translation? Anyone? You need to know at least two need, languages. Yeah, well, which, would, which would they be? Uh, well, if it's an English-Arabic translation, I'd say you need to know English and Arabic. Very good. You need to know English and Arabic to comment on whether this is a good translation or not. And I asked the gentleman a very simple question. Do you know Arabic? He says no. So when he doesn't know Arabic, why does he say this is not a good translation? You know why? Anyone? Any guess? Okay, let me, I know when, okay, the answer is very simple. This is one of the recorded responses that Muslims have been indoctrinated with at, uh, throughout the centuries. The moment you see a verse which you cannot defend, claim it's a bad translation. You will see this all over the place, everywhere. You read some content, it doesn't help you in a public place, claim it's a bad translation. Now, please tell me, sir, why is this a bad translation? Because the people of the scripture, how do you say that in Arabic? How do you What's say that? that? People, how do you say the people of the book and the people of the scripture in Arabic? Ahl al-Kitab, right? 
How does it matter? No, I'm telling you, it says Ahlul Kitab. How does it matter? Ahlul Kitab only comes up once. Now, in the translation, when it mentions the people of Ahlul Kitab, it's talking about the Ijizya tax. It's when the money is talking about the people you have to fight, it's not talking about the people of the scriptures, which is why I know this translation. So, have you read? Did you read the next verse? I can read the translation. I can literally read the verse. Right Please now. come here, read. And the Jews say, but, why does it immediately talk about the Jews? Right, those who do not believe in Allah and the last day, nor comply with Allah and His Messenger have forbidden, nor embrace the religion of truth from among those who were given the scripture until they were, until they pay the tax willingly, submit, humbly humbled, right? Among those who are given the scripture, who are they? So, if they're told, okay, hold on. So, if we're told to fight the people, right? This, this is your claim, I told to fight the people. No, no, among those who are given the scripture, who are they? The people of the book, Jews and the Good. Christians. So why do you want to argue against this? It says that very clearly, doesn't it? No, but it's talking about, at the time, it's a time of war, right? Okay, because now the time is different. Excuse me, sir. My Now, initially you said it's not the Jews and the Christians. Now you're talking no, about... No, you're it let, let, one, one, no, let's, you're, let's listen, make it very simple. Listen, do we agree you the talk. verse is about the people of the scripture? Do we agree? You're saying, you're, listen, you're do saying, we agree? Your argument is... That it's anti anti Jew, right? But it's talking about the idolaters, it's talking about the people of the book, which includes the Jews and the Christians. Yes, but yes. Just not, just okay, okay, Jews. just okay, okay. I hate I hate more people too. And therefore, anti Semitism is fine. Do you see the logic there? It does not matter whether other people are referred to in that passage or not. As a matter of fact, they are not referred to, but it doesn't matter. As long as you hate the Jews. It doesn't matter whether you hate a million other people or not, you hate the Jews. So, what's that? For what reason do they hate the Jews? Well, this is a very good question. Why do the Muslims, why, why does the Quran hate the Jews? Well, it's a very long story. The short version, the short version of the very long story is very simply because whoever advanced this religion wanted to advance a religion without legitimacy. There was no God involved in this. There was no revelation involved in this. Nothing, not, sorry, apologies. Nothing akin to the supernatural wonders that the nation of Israel had seen in their lives involved in this. It's pretty much like, you know, if I, if I take an example of, let's say, a wonderful painter, wonderful artist. Let's say, take, I mean, have, who, who, any, any example painter you want to use for our example, da Vinci. da Vinci, a wonderful painter, Da Vinci. Someone wants to compete against the Da Vinci, but he cannot paint. What would he do? Well, he has a solution. Take the sword. Da Vinci, are you the best painter in the world? No, no. Why? Because the sword is on the back of his neck. This is what Islam has done. Attempting to establish a religion which could not be given legitimacy by any stretch of imagination the only solution they had is the sword so no wonder are you sure? Are you sure? and what is his response Does, do you, you see the problem here my dear friends I am talking about a very serious issue in life and he would not even engage. Why? Because, again, the solution, the solution to many of the questions that you might have about Muslims is very simple. And the solution is indoctrination. In simple parlance, in simple parlance, in simple parlance, brainwashing. Most Muslims across the world have been brainwashed into saying the same things over and over again. Today they do the same thing. Stand here and say, well stand anywhere in the world and say, Netanyahu is a war criminal. Says who? Says who? Well, gentlemen like this. The ICJ took up the case. What did they conclude? What did they conclude? What's that? The ICJ called to release all of the hostages immediately and unconditionally. Yes, so the ICJ called to release all the hostages. And like how our friend has here, here. Bring them home now. Can you imagine? Let me, let me ask you, now let me ask you a very simple question, my dear friends. Let me give you a very simple question. Let's say you are waking up at your home. You've just had a night's sleep, good night's sleep with your family. 
husband, wife, two children, and you're waking up. And suddenly you realized there are a thousand people at your door wanting to wipe you out. So, okay, fine. Well, we're not fine. A thousand people at your door wanting to wipe you out. What would your, in, what would your uh, instinct be? To protect your family. But things get worse. You are trying desperately to protect your family. And you are relatively successful because you have a little bit of muscle power and whatever else power you have. And you are protecting your family. You would hope that over a longer period of time, others would come to help you. But what happens? What was initially a thousand people trying to wipe you out? Now suddenly you realize thousands more are joining by every single hour. And they stand there and say, death to the one who is saving his family. Death to the one who is saving his family. And you are thinking, what is going on? For heaven's sake, what is happening here? Do you see the problem, my dear friends? One would hope for what Israel faced on the 7th of October for many, many decades, if not centuries, sensible people across the world would be able to say, hey, don't bother with them. Don't, don't uh, hassle them anymore. Let them live in peace. I would like to think sensible people, sensible people would say this. What, what has happened today? Not many speak about October 7th anymore. What are they busy doing these days? They are busy talking about things. They are busy talking about things which completely take away the focus from the October 7th. Evil, wicked, terrorist attack that the nation of Israel faced. So, as you guys can see, this brother in Christ spoke the truth about Islam and they become very furious and angry. But what's happening a lot right now is there's a lot of propaganda that's happening that is not only anti-Semitic but pro-terrorism. Unfortunately, because the, pro, the mainstream media is pro-Islam and anyone who goes against Islam nowadays is Islamophobic. But you know what's even more interesting? That we could actually use something from their book to back up our claims. When you go to Surah 8, Ayah 12, in their holy text, the Quran, it states, When your Lord inspired to the angels, I am with you, so strengthen those who have believed, meaning the Muslims. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieved, so strike them upon the necks and strike from them every fingertip. And so we know that this is an actual thing that the Quran teaches Muslims to do. This is the reason why in the name of Allah, in the name of Bina Jihadis, this is why all across the Middle East and Northern Africa, and even now today, unfortunately in Europe, you see that they actually behead people and take off their fingertips because this is literally what they're being taught to do in their Quran. Nothing about that is called extremism in Islam. They're actually, what we consider extremists in Islam are actually Muslims just practicing what they're taught in their Quran. And the westernized Muslims we see today who don't behead non-believers, they're actually not following what their Quran tells them to do. And that's why like David Wood likes to say and a lot of other apologists, I completely agree. Because whenever you look at most Muslims, they're a lot nicer than Muhammad and the Muslims back in the day. Because they're not truly following Islam for what it truly is. Now whenever you look at Jesus Christ, he doesn't say for us to strike them upon their necks and their cheeks. He actually tells us to turn the other cheek. And he tells us, even when they revile you, when they persecute you, you're blessed. And to seek after him in Jesus Christ alone. Not to seek vengeance because vengeance belongs to the Lord. That's the difference between Christianity and Islam. And I, it's so funny how Muslims try to justify their anti-Semitism. Just because you also hate Christians and you're anti-Christ too, doesn't make you any less anti-Semite at all. You're still, you still have anti-Semitism and you, you're all as well on top of that anti-Christ. So it makes it even worse. It doesn't make you any better. 
But we just have to realize this, guys. The Quran is a book full of hatred. I can't even believe it's a religious text that people still believe in. And they love to go to the Arabic. Oh, do you speak the Arabic? Because if you don't speak the Arabic, you won't know. And then that's why whenever they go against people who do speak Arab, like Arabic, like Arab Christians, they don't know what to say. They're confounded because it's a it's a scapegoat. It's a scapegoat because they know most people don't speak Arabic because they don't know how to answer the question. That's the reality. Why they always say, do you speak the Arabic? Come on, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Please comment your opinions. Please don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, like, and I hope you guys have a very blessed weekend.